this is where I can start to relax now. I can start talking like normal people now. Before it was me trying to look at notes in my mind. It's not easy for that. If I look at notes for real, it messes everything up. A lot of things mess me up when I'm trying to do that. That's how come I know God is here. And it's in uh, Romans 9. Uh, I already said it, but I want to make sure we see the scripture for yourself. 9.15 and 16. Fifteen alone is fine. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. And so, I'll be honest with you, the more you look at this stuff, the, sometimes the more complicated it does look, but you see the Lord reaching out to everybody. He did say to go, go ye into all the world, right? He said the world, he didn't mean just go to certain people. He said go to all the world, right? And he also said that for God so loved the world. Amen. So we see him reaching out to everybody. I believe that's who he is reaching out to. I don't believe God just died for some people. He died for the world. Is that right? Yes. Blood of Jesus Christ is for the world. Those that will to do his will, he works with them. He saves them, he justifies them, and brings them in. They're, they're born in the family of God. And these are believed. He says, I will have mercy on those, I will have mercy. There's a certain kind of people that he says he will not despise. Broken the contrite. He says that the, the, the high and the lofty one dwells in the heavens and in those that have a broken and contrite spirit. It's a certain kind of thing that God can't resist. Amen. He likes that. So he, there's something that can attract the Lord. He says, I'll have mercy on these people, the lowly. And he knows he knows some people, they're hard to work with, so he doesn't even bother. He said, preach the gospel to the poor. And I remember seeing that. There was a, a Muslim man. They wanted to uh, move to America and start his own, start his own, what does it say, coven? I can't remember what thing's called. He wanted to start his own troop troop, mosque or something. Right. And, uh, he said he went, he went to the poor area. So he goes to the poor area, and on his way out there, he gets hit by a car, and the people who picked him up and took care of him nursed him for several months and got him because he got hit bad. And he said, I believe in Allah, but these people are so nice. I'm having a very serious hard time not wanting to listen to them. Okay. And um, eventually he got converted to do this thing. But it was amazing how he, people who are, really have vision for something, they look at what they know will work. And trying to tap some a rich guy on the shoulder and tell him about Jesus, he's gonna. I mean, he won't even laugh at you because it's so stupid to him. Not always, but you know what I mean. A lot of the times that is the case. I I know. I'm down there all the time, and a lot of those people they don't care. They literally think that you're stupid. They literally think you're crazy. A lot of them do. They just oh, nice, nice little guy. Enjoy your little cute little religion. I've already been educated out of that stuff, and it's been debunked. The Bible's been debunked by great studiers and <laughs> stuff like that. I'm like, wonderful. Amazing how things you don't want to think about are debunked. <laughs> Everything's debunked if you want to get into a certain camp. Oh, the other thing I don't like, debunked. Great. <laughs> I was reading um, from Paris Reedhead today some really interesting things. It's really, really cool. Also about getting out there, okay? This is a thought about getting out. And we are all going to go there, okay? Nobody is exempt from this. We're, we're going to out. We are called, as Christians, we're not just the sitters and the pews. We are the go-outers, okay? There's got to be something that we can do where we are. And if you don't know, then I'll help you. I'll help you find a way to get some way of the gospel out there to reach people because there are people out there who are willing to soften their hearts before God. We want them. Amen. Amen. So that's everybody. If you're a Christian, that is who you are. He um, got a lot of flyers because he was doing a revival meeting. He wanted to go all over the city and put flyers everywhere. I'm like, why don't we do that? Just cheap flyers, print them out, chop them up, put them all over the place. Here, boom, 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 boom. He goes out to this guy. He was he was born in Minnesota. He's such amazing stories as a young man, incredible. 
Um, one story was gonna make me cry. But this one is really cool. He was out there putting out flyers. He gets the one guy who owns like a ranch or whatever, and he uh, the man tells him he's like, I'll go to your meeting. I'll go to all your meetings if you ride that horse over there. And he sees this horse and it looks like it was just sleeping. So Paris <laughs> gets on the horse and um, it's never been ridden before. And uh, the fuming rage of every torquing muscle in that thing went absolutely berserk. And <laughs> Paris stepped on that thing like glue. And he held on for his life and made it through. And so that dude did come to all the meetings and actually helped him out getting all the rest of the flyers out there and stuff like that. Radical, you know, we can do that. There's things that we can't invite people to. This church, any church, I don't care where it is. Just just get going. You know, I'd rather you went to some church that I don't even like that much because I sometimes don't see the follow through, but I'd rather you wouldn't hear some truth. I mean, I went to I went to a mega church and started weeping sometimes because where I was, that was like light to me. Right. Amen. Amen. Come on. Yeah. Go, go, just go, go, go. I mean, if you really want God, you will find Him. If you can't find Him at that church, then keep going until you find what you're looking for. <laughs> Come on. We are not here to be dead. We're here to be living. He's come to give us life more abundantly. Praise His holy name. We're supposed to be up here. Spiritually speaking, we're supposed to be spiritually strong with nothing. We don't have idols to bow down before. We don't have all this stuff that the world needs, but we're stronger than everybody else because we've been, we're, we're on the pocket that God has called us into. We've been designed to be worshiping Him, and our walk is a worship. It's an obedient walk. Worship is more to do with obedience than anything else. Song is not, songs are not worship, okay? The other thing that happened, he was talking about, um, his, his daughter was writing in the preface about um, her dad, loves her dad, just knows that he was called at a very young age. When he was born, his neck was broken when he was born. They were going to put him out. They were gonna, the doctor said, he's done. His neck is stuck like this, broken. And mom said, no, no. He's, I know the Lord has called him. My Lord already showed me that he's going to be a voice to the masses. That he's going to preach. So they prayed. And when he fully was delivered, the dude was perfectly fine, breathing fine. Everything was totally fine. Radical miracle. That guy was like a, a you know, a almost dead baby. But God saved him, spared him, and just like, whoa. You know, this man means so much to me because he is one that embraces, he doesn't fight about all this silly stuff. He brings a healthy perspective of it and says, would you guys stop arguing? It's like, you guys are putting, pinning stuff on John Calvin that he did not do. I mean, there's some things that he did that was wrong, and he paid for those things. Those things that he did right, though he, that, that good. Praise God for all the good that you did too. God forgive you for the things you did wrong. Amen? Amen. 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 There's an old sermon that he did called Turkey Wing in the Hand of God. And it was in regards to living in a really poor house in the middle of winter that gets extremely cold because the only source of heat was the wood stove. And uh, he gets up really early in the morning probably the same time I probably do. <laughs> he goes over to the stove and he's, it's his job to stoke the fire and get the thing going so the house will continue being warm and like, you can't see any coals in there. But if you kind of start to poke in there and start to dig a little bit, get those coals started up a little bit, throw a couple little things in there to get a little flame going on in there, then he goes and grabs the turkey wing. It's looking at the feathers. I was picturing it when I was reading that. I'm like, a turkey wing? Like a, like a little, like a, like a ready to get cooked wing? I'm like, how's that going to do anything? <laughs> I was like, what is he doing, cooking turkey or something? So I didn't catch it, but it, I was like, oh, okay. Big old wing, he starts fanning that thing, fanning that flame right there, and it starts to go, and the, and the Lord was saying, you know what, I've called you to do that. And, and surely, he was. He was called to fan the flame of faith for those that really do want God, fanning the flames of, of glory for people to say, do you remember him again? He says, I'm here to deliver you from complacency. I'm here to deliver you from shallow religion. I'm here to deliver you from all the ways that you've been seeing that has been a more like a hamster wheel going around in circles and getting nowhere. I'm here to fan the flame and get you on the right path again. That's what he did. He still is. He died in early, he died in early age. Come on. He died in early age and he was saying, God, I'm, you're going to heal me. And if you don't, this word is going to go to the masses anyway whether I'm actually there doing it or the hundreds of sermons that he's got online to listen to. I'm saying if you listen to those, honey, you're going to get flamed. 
you're going to get deep-rooted theology that's going to ground you and not be some little top shot shooter. Oh, those guys are so stupid over there. They're so stupid over there. I'm like, you better watch your mouth. Even if they're dead wrong, you're dead wrong for doing it. Careless talk does not come from the Holy Spirit. He grounds you in a healthy reality. There's some people out there with a word that makes you go, boom. And I say, good. The only thing about Paris Reed is he's never said anything weird. Never said anything wrong. Always healthy. So we're going to be learning a lot from that man. We used to watch videos and stuff like that. Because what? I'll learn it and we'll just do it natural. El natural. You want to listen to this stuff? You don't have to wonder where I'm getting my stuff from. I'm not, I'm, I'm not shy about it. I'm not a plagiarizer, but I know where the best stuff is. Come on. Come on. <laughs>